Hi guys, Marcelina here. Is your citrus tree dropping off its fruits before they reach full size or dropping off blossoms before fruit even start to develop? If this is one of your citrus problems, this video is for you. Stay tuned, be right back. Hello happy YouTubers! Welcome to Cash Your Greens. My name is Marcelina. In today's video, we're going to share important information about citrus problem, why your citrus flowers and fruits are dropping off. So stay with us till the end. Get as much information as you can from this video. Don't miss every single piece of it. Before we continue, if this is your first visit here, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Alright, let's move on in the next chapter. Welcome to our mini citrus farm. Alright guys, we're going to show you our calamansi here or calamanden. I'm going to focus the camera so you guys can see it. This is our calamansi finally blooming this year. As you see, one branch is loaded with so many flowers. If you see as many flowers as this, you get excited because many flowers, many fruits to harvest, right? But in general, majority of these flowers don't develop into fruit. And I'm going to explain it to you why. So stay with us closely. Why is citrus is kicking off majority of the blossoms? We need this blossom, guys. We want to have a lot of fruits from our trees so we can harvest them. Should we worry? Well, for the most part, yes. If you're watching this video right now, this information is going to help you eliminate or reduce your worries or concern why your citrus blossoms dropping off or why your citrus fruit dropping off the ground. Now, let me explain a little bit here of our physiology of our citrus tree. Now, trees photosynthesize to produce sugars and convert the sugars into energy and stored in the plants only, need, only given if the plant needs it. Now, during the active growth, this energy is only a small portion is given to the plant so the plant can utilize and create these new shoots like what you see here, new branching and new roots. During fruiting time, this is the activity that the plant needs a lot of energy. So what will happen, your citrus is going to drive all this energy from where it is stored and focus on producing into flowers. Now, there is no way, guys, that your citrus is going to hold all, all those flowers and make them fruit. There is no way. Only 2% of those blossoms is going to go into a good crop. Now, I will, I will explain it here. So, for example here, if this flower here in one branch is going to develop all of them into fruit, what will happen, this branch is going to break off. So, the the tree can tell that it is too heavy for my tree so I can only hold as many fruit so I will get rid of them so if you have so many blossoms or so many uh, small fruit dropping off the ground there's nothing for you to worry this is a natural cause now there is another problem that you are going to look forward in terms of blossom drop or fruit drop and we're going to mention this later on in the next episode coming up all right guys so let's take a look at the citrus here citrus has these uh, phases of growth so the first phase you will notice bud formation then followed by flower flower organization you see this in the midwinter now in the second phase you see in the early spring you, this flower turns to fruit look at this fruit is so cute and in the third phase this fruit turns this size this is now in the growth phase now it increases the size and then in the last phase it's maturity so this is now uh, ripe and i'm going to pick this fruit i also have the lime here this branch guys was loaded with flowers but the tree get rid of them only one left and i have more blossoms here and this one here this is going to uh, go into full size so trees can only bear fruit as many as they can as the tree can hold so don't worry guys it's a natural cause so I'm not expecting with my fruit here that I'm sure I probably get like one or maybe two or three uh, full develop and majority of them probably fall off the ground because if all of them develop to a full size these branches will break off so the tree can uh, tell or is capable of getting rid of this fruit so there is still space from other fruit 
So that is a natu natural cause. Now, if your citrus blossoms are dropping off the ground, nothing live in the branch, it mean, that means you have a serious problem with your citrus. So there are a few problems. So one of them is the watering, so improper watering. Citrus needs a lot of water, especially if you grow them in container, you water them more frequent, and especially uh, in summertime when the, when the sun is, uh, when the weather is too hot, the container grown is easily dry out. So you need to water them more frequently. I install irrigation in my garden and place my citrus under irrigation. So if you can uh, install irrigation, that is great for your citrus so it, they can provide uh, water to the plant. Now it is also necessary to add compost to your citrus because the compost is going to hold moisture and then it doesn't dry out the soil media. So there's also something to do with the soil, make sure the soil is not too compact. Yeah, that's why it is not necessary to have a clay soil because it disrupts the absorption of nutrients and water. So make sure that it is a combination of sand if you want to use sand or perlites and cocoa peat. Now let's talk about the fertilizer. I'm going to bring uh, Greg Steven here and he's going to add extra help for you guys. Alright guys, so Greg is living in here. We are going to give you information about the citrus. It's about this nitrogen and potassium, why it is important. Well, a lot of things to take consideration when your plant is producing blossoms. That's the first uh, thing you want to do is get your plant to start producing flowers and blossoming. And then they start to produce the little tiny citrus lemons or oranges or whatever it is. And then you start to notice they start dropping off. And that's very, very frustrating. You're thinking like, oh my God, I worked so hard to get these blossoms. And now they're just dropping off. Mm -hmm. Well, when we first purchased this variegated pink Eureka lemon, it went through an adjustment period and started dropping all of its leaves. That was the first thing. But then the leaf... Uh, they stopped falling and it just exploded with blossoms. And the same thing, it started to drop off almost all of the uh, the little tiny lemons that it was producing. I think there's about four. So have, there's about four, four of them on the whole plant now. This one is going to be left. They got a new little blossom coming out here <laughs> in the tip. They're purple. The blossoms on the variegated the Eurekas are purple, which is kind of pretty. Uh, why though? Look, see, now the leaf just fell off. <laughs> Why does your citrus start dropping its blossoms and its new fruit? And uh, it all has to do with the fertilizer, the soil. And uh, when you buy your plants from the nurseries, they aren't really doing much to boost the, uh, the fertilizer. They're just trying to sell it as fast as they can. You gotta do soil tests on your plants and your citrus, especially if they're in pots. And uh, they go through, their, your citrus are very heavy feeders. Yeah, very heavy feeders. So you, you have to feed them differently during the time of the year. You have three different cycles of with the citrus. You have a growth phase, you have a blooming phase, and you have a dormancy phase. And this one uh, went through the dormancy, through the bloom, and now I'm just waiting for it to start producing some new leaves to fill it out for the, and get ready for the summer growth phase. Um, this is really a neat little little plant, but uh, it's, it's a, this is a tough challenge, the Eureka variegated. Why does your plant start dropping its newly formed fruit? Did you go over that with yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't go over it. Okay. It's, in, it's all in your potassium. Yeah. Uh, and so, one of the things we were talking about in, uh, in, the, in the house before we started making this video is what can we do to add more potassium to our citrus plants. And uh, I've always known that wood ash or potash mm -hmm. or potash, however you want to call it, yeah. uh, is, is very good in potassium. However, your citrus plants are acid loving plants. Mm -hmm. They want an acidic soil around 6.5 and potash or potassium is going to neutralize and raise your, your pH yeah, in your plant yeah. to make it more of an alkaline soil and then you're gonna reverse everything that you're doing. So you have to have a very specific potash mm -hmm. or potash for citrus plants. 
Now, oh, this one has something. This one, the Citratone, has a, a very good uh, balance. It's balanced. It's a 526, which means that the highest nutrient found in this is potassium. So, this is what you want to get. Mm -hmm. And you want to stick with one type of fertilizer. You don't want to be changing and say, oh, this one looks really good. I'll try this one. You, you want to stick with the same fertilizer so your plants do adjust to it and you're going to uh, get your pH and switching fertilizer on your plants is like you switching medicines and you're going to get different reactions. You're going to get some uh, uh, reactions that you're not going to like sometimes. So stick with the same same one. Okay. Citrus tone is the best one for your citrus plants. Um, potassium is the answer though for, for doing this and keeping your pH in the right range. Yeah. So normally the potassium is, is second to nitrogen. So you're going to increase your potassium. You know, the first thing you need to give to the plant in the spring is the nitrogen. And then after that, you, you put, uh, the potassium because you want that immunity of the plant. And also it increase the production of the fruit. Now this is a lime plant that I have so here. So is there any way, other ways, besides potassium and fertilizer, what is another a reason why the fruit, because we just have the fruit dropping off yesterday and it wasn't yes. enough. So what well, was I'm going to show you right here. <laughs> I was taking care of this plant all winter long. It's it was produ it's produced some fruit during the winter, and it's, as you can see right now, it's starting to explode with blossoms like crazy. But I was sitting back here and I look and I see this powdery, aphid. this like a uh, that's an aphid. It's an aphid. It's a um, it's a little mite, and this you want to. It's this is what's causing a couple of my my limes to turn yellow, and they started dropping off. Mm. Even some of the little leaves have mm. these uh, little powdery uh, because there insects are insects on the back here. And so, what you want to do with this one is you want to hit it with the, the neem oil with the uh, soap in have, it. You might have to uh, put on thin that. Well, we're going to hit this. And what happens now? You got to treat it. Spray it with your neem and soapy water, and uh, about three days later, you want to hit it again. I'll tell you why. You will kill the adult insects with the first spray, but the eggs are still going to hatch out, and you want to kill the larvae when they when they come out. You got to kill it, so you have to treat it probably about three times, and just keep an eye on it after that. This needs another treatment now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a, a beautiful so little lime tree. Yeah. So he's going to spray this guy, so if you have problem with your citrus, because that is another uh, reason why the fruit drop off or the flower drop off, because if the infestation is doing through in there, it loses that oxygenation to that part, and then there's no oxygen in that section, then it would fall off, so the tree is getting rid of I, that. I keep my neem oil and Woo! my soap, water over here next to the heater, <laughs> because I want to keep that, this water nice and warm so that when I shake it up, that so, soap in there emulsifies that. So when you spray, guys, you have to spray it in properly and in the correct way. So he's going to show you how to spray the plant. So you spray front and back. Neemang is not going to hurt you. It's not a chemical that will hurt you. I even have the fan blowing towards me. It's not going to hurt me. And then after you spray it really good, you got to flip it upside down and you want to spray the bottom side of your leaves as well because these little critters will hide. It's, it's dying now. Most of them is dead. So yeah. you probably put that in here. That's good. Yeah. Good so to this, go. Yeah. So this is how you apply the citrus, guys. So is there any reason about the irrigation that I mentioned irrigation uh, important? Well, also if you're if you're not watering it enough, you have to have a, a lot of water when it's producing fruit because they are absorbing a lot of, of water in the fruit and if it's not getting enough water because the fruit is pulling all the, uh, the, the energy out of there you'll start dropping your blossoms your fruit will fall off and the same is true if you're giving it too much water they'll drop the fruit that way too so you have to find that fine balance what you want to do is wait until your soil is completely dry you can stick your finger down there about two inches if you pull it out and it's moist don't water it or you can get the meter gauge and so you can test that by sticking it down in the soil. We just get this one guys and this is awesome because you can yeah. 
you kind of you it's got big large letters it's a digital printout i just love that <laughs> and you can actually uh see it much easier so the fertilizer if you fertilize you mentioned that in our other video that before you have to check the creates to be the fertilizer Hold on. Right now, this one's reading 7.0. 7.0, I'd like it to be a little bit lower than that, around 6.5. So this is alkaline then? Yeah, it's it's neutral. Yeah, neutral. You must have to... Yeah, but it'll do okay at a 7, but i like it to be more 6.5. This is a nice little meter. This thing, you can adjust it and set it for what plant that you're testing. That's kind of cool. Yeah. This is the only one I've ever seen that does that. You program it so you're right on track. Every okay, time. that's about it, you know. Yeah. So don't worry, guys. As long you know, dropping off, it's mostly happened in the plant. The plant is trying to get rid of it. It's natural cause. And then if you see all of them, then that is the problem. Maybe check your water, watering, fertilizer, and then your your pits and the soil because pits is one thing that you have to. Uh, Check first before you add the fertilizer. Potential hydrogen. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know potassium. So potassium, we'll say that the potassium is not really mobile. Mostly potassium is in the leaves, and then you need to provide potassium. This, if you grow the citrus in the soil, and we grow citrus in the soil, and you need to make sure that the potassium, if it is less in the soil, then you have to add potassium. There's so many potassium that it is cheap, like potassium chloride. So don't get that fluoride. It is fluoride, guys. You have to read the label of the uh, commercial fertilizer because you don't want any toxicity added to your citrus and then you consume the trade citrus. Right? That's right. Okay, guys. So if you have any question, just comment below this video. Thank you for watching. And this is Greg Seven. My name is Marcelina. Stay green and grow big. Peace. Peace.